A mysterious noise that landed several CIA officers in the hospital, unexplained illnesses both rare and common, two sisters who some believe were the reincarnated versions of their two dead siblings, and just what is ball lightning? These are unsolved mysteries scientists still haven't been able to figure out. In December of 2016, a CIA officer in Havana checked into the embassy's health office complaining of nausea, headaches, and dizziness. Soon, more American and Canadian diplomats reported similar symptoms. By late 2018, 26 Americans and 13 Canadians had fallen ill, and all of them claimed the sickness started after hearing a strange noise. Some described a high-pitched sound, others said it was like marbles rolling on the floor, and one person even said it felt like a, quote, beam of sound sound directed at them. Doctors couldn't figure out what caused the symptoms. Some specialists thought it was like a concussion, but scans showed no signs of a head injury. So what was happening? Was the Cuban government using some kind of weapon? The theory that a sonic weapon might be involved got a lot of attention, but the CIA insisted they didn't know of any device that could cause these types of symptoms. Some said that maybe ultrasound might have been to blame, but the FBI found no evidence of it, and ultrasound is outside the range of human hearing anyway. Way. Things got even stranger when scientists studied recordings of the sound. Two researchers believed it sounded like male crickets calling to each other. The sound was so loud you could hear it inside a diesel truck going 40 miles per hour though. But why would this cause people to get sick? They didn't have an answer. Then in 2018, something similar happened in China. An American diplomat developed the same symptoms. In the end, 15 Americans were evacuated. Was it a weapon, a weird natural occurrence, or just stress playing tricks on people's minds? No one knows for sure. Ball lightning. If you ever heard of ball lightning, you probably thought it was just an old myth, but it is real. Ball lightning is basically a floating, glowing sphere of electricity that can last for several seconds to even minutes. They've been seen during thunderstorms, but scientists still don't fully understand how they form. There are a lot of theories out there though. Some say it's an electrical discharge. Others think it could be plasma or a mix of gases. The biggest issue is that ball lightning is unpredictable and incredibly difficult to study. It's appeared in different sizes, colors, and places, but no one has been able to create or replicate it in a controlled setting. There have been reports of it passing through windows or causing damage to homes and buildings even, but despite that, the ball lightning is still one of the many mysteries out there that hasn't been cracked by science. We've all heard of Alzheimer's disease. It affects millions of people worldwide, and though we know the effect it has on the human brain, we're less sure about exactly what causes it. It's one of the most unsettling puzzles in modern medicine. The disease leads to memory loss, confusion, and drastic changes in behavior, and in the end, it's fatal. Scientists have a few theories about what might be causing it, like the buildup of certain proteins in the brain, but nothing is certain. There's no clear answer for why these proteins build up or how they lead to the brain damage seen in Alzheimer's patients. Worse, there's no cure or even an effective treatment. Researchers have tried to develop treatments and therapies, but so far nothing has proven to be successful in slowing down, let alone reversing the effects. What makes this so terrifying is that Alzheimer's is only becoming more common as the population ages, and without a clear understanding of the disease, it's difficult to make progress in treating it. Between 1917 and 1928, a strange illness called encephalitis lethargica, or sleeping sickness, hit half a million people worldwide. Victims seemed perfectly awake but were trapped in their own bodies. They couldn't move, and the, their bodies would stay completely still for hours or even days. Some could blink, speak a little, or even laugh, but otherwise they were like statues. Why anyone would feel the need to laugh in that kind of situation is beyond me, but about a third of those who got sick died. The cause of the disease is still a mystery, but one theory is that it could be connected to a rare type of brain inflammation caused by a mutated strain of Streptococcus bacteria, the same bacteria that causes sore throats. It's thought that the body's immune system might have attacked the brain, leaving the person completely helpless. Next up, we have something that's baffled scientists for years, the missing baryon problem. You might be wondering though, what exactly is a baryon? Baryons are particles like protons and neutrons that make up the core of atoms. Here's the issue. According to calculations, there should be far more of these particles scattered around the universe than we actually detect. The problem is scientists can't find them. 
They know they're out there somewhere, but the question is where? The universe should be filled with these particles, but they're mysteriously absent from the places they expect to find them. Some think they might be hiding in areas where we can't observe them, like in the dark matter that makes up most of the universe's mass. Others think there could be some weird new physics we haven't figured out yet. Whatever the answer though, scientists haven't found it yet. We talked about the sleeping sickness earlier, now we've got the sweating sickness. This was a mysterious illness that spread across England during the Tudor period, mainly between 1485 and 1551. The symptoms were intense, starting with a high fever and heavy sweating, and usually it ended in death within hours. People would literally sweat to death. What makes it even more frightening was how suddenly it would strike. In just a couple of hours, the person could be dead. Outbreaks happened at random times, but then, after 1551, it just disappeared. There wasn't a cure, it just stopped happening. Another odd thing about this sickness was that it mostly affected native English people. Wealthy men were hit the hardest, and it seemed to target rural areas rather than cities. But despite all the destruction it caused, no one has ever figured out what caused it. The Min Min Lights are a strange phenomenon seen in the Australian outback, with reports dating back even before European settlers arrived. The lights are usually described as glowing, fuzzy, disc-shaped orbs that hover just above the horizon. Most of the time they're white, but some people say they've seen them change color, red, green, and back again. They can be bright enough to cast shadows, but in other cases they're much dimmer. They're usually seen in areas like Channel Country and Yunta, South Australia, and they've been part of Aboriginal folklore for years. Over the years, more and more sightings have been reported, stretching from New South Wales all the way up to Northern Queensland. What makes these lights especially strange is how they seem to move. Some people say the lights follow them, or come close only to disappear, then reappear later. There's even a spooky part of the story that says anyone who chases the lights will never come back. Scientists have tossed around a few ideas to explain the lights, but again, nothing definitive. Most living things on Earth need oxygen to survive, either to breathe it in or to produce it. But when scientists discovered animals living without oxygen deep in the Mediterranean Sea, well, it was a bit of a surprise. Typically, only simple organisms like bacteria can survive without oxygen, but these creatures are far more complex. They belong to a group called Lorisifera. And the crazy thing is that these animals used to breathe oxygen, but they somehow adapted over time not to. As the oxygen in their environment depleted and was replaced by salts, they just found a way to deal with it. Scientists still don't fully understand how these creatures evolved like this. It kind of makes you wonder whether we really are the pinnacle of evolution after all. One of the biggest mysteries in science is why there's more matter than antimatter in the universe. First off, what's the difference between the two? Well, matter is everything around us, atoms, molecules, basically the stuff we're made of. Antimatter, on the other hand, is the opposite. It has the same mass, but an opposite charge to the particles of matter. When matter and antimatter meet, they destroy each other. So if the universe started with equal amounts of both, they should have annihilated each other and left nothing behind. But clearly that's not what happened. We have stars, planets, galaxies, and people all made of matter. Antimatter is much more rare. Scientists have been trying to figure out why there's this imbalance for decades. One theory is that right after the Big Bang, tiny differences in how matter and antimatter behaved could have led to a slight excess of matter. Over time, that extra matter formed everything we see today. But that's just one theory. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.